and swiftly runs his command. He showers down snow white as wool. He scatters hoar frost like ashes.
Oh, yeah. 
way of perfection. As we celebrate his entrance into glory, may we attain you that love which surpasses all understanding. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. During the time young Samuel was ministered to the Lord under Eli, a revelation of the Lord was uncommon, a vision infrequent. One day, Eli was asleep in his usual place. His eyes had lately grown so weak that he could not see. The lamp of God was not yet extinguished, and Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me? I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, you called me? But Eli answered, I did not call you my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. So the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am. You called me? Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So Eli said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel answered, Speak, for your, for your servant is listening. The Word of the Lord. I bless the Lord who counsels me. I said, Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, draw your strength from the Lord and from his mighty power. Put on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with the principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. Therefore, put on the armor of God, that you may be able to resist on the evil day, and having done everything to hold your ground. With all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the Spirit. To that end, be watchful with all perseverance and supplication for all the Holy Ones. The Word of the Lord. Thank you. 
and faithfully put it into practice. We are blessed by your answer and by your decision to throw in your lot with us, and blessed by your hearing the rule and putting it into practice. And in days to come, when you finally overcome your shyness and your introverted character and your nonverbal nature, you will wake one heck of a month here at St. Vincent. Brothers and sisters, an Irish priest of my acquaintance spent some years as a missionary in the South American country of Guyana. More specifically, in the southwest corner of that country, bordering the Brazilian Amazon. He tells the story of how, when he was stationed there, he was asked to go and see one of the indigenous men of the area, a man called Crispin. In a brilliant stroke of luck, Crispin had been given the chance of a lifetime. He'd been offered a well-compensated government position in Georgetown, the capital city. It really was a, a wonderful opportunity for him to gain some financial security for his family and, and also to raise their standard of living. It was even considered a, a kind of boom for his village to have a friendly representative in an important government position in the capital. But Crispin didn't want to go, and he wouldn't tell anyone why. So the Irish priest was delegated to go and talk some sense into him. They started, the priest thought, quite safely talking about the weather. Then they talked about his farm, and he told the priest about all his worries for next year's cassava crop, a potato-like staple of the area. Eventually, the priest worked the conversation around to talking about the job, and the farmer agreed that it was a big opportunity for him. He could see the benefits for himself, for his family, for his village, and so after a little while, probably about two hours, which in that part of the world is only a little while, they got to the point. If he was clear in his mind, that this was a good opportunity for himself, for his family, and for his village. Why, then, didn't he want to go? He explained, well, you see, Father, two years ago, when we had the hunger, my family had the least food in the whole village, and the people shared with us. One man, I don't know him well, but he shared his last bowl of cassava with me. If I go into the city and there is a hunger, who will share their cassava with me? So the priest tried to explain that the city is a big place. There's lots of people there, and they have lots of money, and they truck in food from all over the country. There won't be a famine there. The man, Crispin, thought about that for a little while, and then he asked again, But Father, what happens if the hunger isn't just for food? Again, the priest tried to explain that there were many good people in the city. Even deep hungers can be satisfied. Crispin thought about that for quite a while, and then the priest could see that he made his mind up. A little light of decision came into his eyes. Well, Father, you may be right, but even so, I always wanted to live my life in a place where a man would share his last bowl of cassava with me. And that place is right here. And as it happened, Crispin never did go to Georgetown. He never did get the big job. And I understand that to this day he is still growing his field of cassava and worrying about how late the rains are this season. Well, the priest replied.
recorded that he left him, but he did so with a certain reverence and admiration. He felt that way because we all want to live our lives in a place when the hunger, capital H, comes, whatever kind of hunger it happens to be, there will be a community that supports us. And someone who will share with us that last bowl of cassava. Someone who will share his or her very last treasure. Folks, I tell the story today because the young man in today's gospel faced a similar momentous decision. Oh, he felt compelled by Jesus' message. He was righteous and faithful to the law. And he realized that something was missing. So he sought out Jesus, seeking answers. And Jesus saw the infinite potential in him. The man questioned Jesus about his desire for eternal life. And Jesus presented the options. Put your trust and belief in your possessions and wealth, or put your trust and belief in the promise of Jesus Christ himself. The man weighed the options and decided the price was just too high. He slowly backed away. He couldn't take that last step. And as the Gospel says, he went away sad. Jesus' invitation to the man in the Gospel is on the table for us. And Bosco, Jesus' invitation was on the table for you. And you had plenty of options, but you chose Jesus Christ, and you chose us, and you chose our community. Like all humans, you want to live your life in a place where, when the hunger comes, whatever kind of hunger it happens to be, capital H, there will be someone who will share with us the last bowl of cassava, someone who will share his very last treasure. As Christians, we call that place the kingdom of God. That's the place where the Lord invites all of us to live. As monks, we call that place the monastery, where you, Bosco, commit yourself forever today. And by doing, you are not only promised the last bowl of cassava from your brothers, you will promise that you will serve your last bowl to us, your brothers. Your hunger, whatever kind of hunger it happens to be, will be satisfied here. And our collective hunger, whatever kind of hunger it happens to be, will be addressed by you. As the rule says, you must be well aware that as the law of the rule establishes, from this day forward, you are no longer free to leave the monastery, nor to shake from your neck the yoke of the rule, which, in the course of so prolonged a period of reflection, you were free either to reject or to accept. Today you are to be received. And you come before the whole community here in this holy place and promise before God and the community stability, fidelity to the monastic life, and obedience. And be reminded, we do this holy thing, this sacred thing, in the context of the Eucharist. And we are reminded that the Lord Jesus is the one who gives us his all. He gives us his last bowl, if you will. He feeds us with his own body and blood, soon present on this altar. He bestows on us the treasure of his very self. May the Eucharistic Lord 
in whom you have so much devotion, sustain in you your vows for all eternity. After our deliberations, I accept Brother Bosco Huff for solemn profession in our community.
consecration to your service. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, purify him from all sin and send him on fire with your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
creator of the human race. Your love for us was so great that you gave us a share in your own divine life. Neither the sin of Adam nor even the sins of the whole world could alter your loving purpose. In the dawn of history, you gave us Abel as an example of holiness. Later, from your beloved Hebrew people, you raised up men and women graced with every virtue. Foremost among them all stands Mary, the ever-virgin daughter of Zion. From her pure womb was born Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the Savior of the world. You sent him, Father, as our pattern of holiness. He became poor to make us rich, a slave to set us free. With love no words could tell, he redeemed the world by his paschal mystery and won from you the gifts of the Spirit to sanctify his church. The voice of the Spirit has drawn countless numbers of your children to follow in the footsteps of your Son. They leave all things to be one with you in the bonds of love and give themselves wholly to your service and the service of all your people. Look with favor then on this man who has heard your call. Send him the spirit of holiness. Help him to fulfill in faith what you have enabled him to promise in joy. Keep always before his eyes Christ the divine teacher. Give him perfect chastity, ungrudging poverty, and wholehearted obedience. May he glorify you by his humility, serve you with facility, and be one with all. May he build up the church by the holiness of his life, advance the salvation of the world, and stand as a sign of the blessings that are to come. Lord, protect and guide this servant of yours. At the judgment seat of your Son, be yourself the great reward. Give him the joy of vows fulfilled. Made perfect in your love, may he rejoice in the communion of your saints and praise you forever in their company. We ask this. Brother Bosco received this salt. May it be a reminder that this life is rooted in the praise of God in the words of the Psalms. Thank you.
chose him as a master in the way of perfection, so that inspired by his work and example, your people might seek you in truth and strive for the rewards you have promised. And therefore, we sing your praise with all the company of angels and saints, as we joyfully proclaim. one body 
let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Thank you. 